Okay, so here we are at uh, Objective 2. And then what we're doing in Objective 2 is we're locating and using what are called relative extrema of polynomial functions. Um, what that means is fancy terms for where, where are the humps on our graph? Where, where do those y values, the x values for each one of those humps go? Now, without actually having a knowledge of calculus, it's hard to do this on paper. It's hard to do this um, algebraically. So uh, in your first semester of calculus, if you choose to do it, that's one of the, the applications of a derivative, uh, the first derivative. So in the meantime, we're just using our graphing calculator to approximate where those values are, okay? So it's going to be pretty simple, just like the first objective, right? It's mostly calculator application. So in this picture here, um, this is actually, uh, I got the idea of using a picture like this from one of my students submitting an extra credit image and so what we have here is the smallest man living and he's holding the hand of the uh, tallest man living and the picture right there is pretty dramatic it's pretty awesome so here again we're talking about extremes extrema smallest value and, and largest value alright so uh, just some review uh, based on the quadratics based on parabolas and then we're going to apply this to polynomial functions of degree higher than 2. So first of all, the vertex of a parabola is what's going to mark the, the turning point, the highest point, the lowest point on your graph. Turning point on a graph means this. You are turning from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So take a look at the graph that we have here. So if I move from left to right, the values on the graph are going down. They are decreasing. And then at the vertex, it just turns a corner, and then it starts increasing again. That's what we mean by a turning point. Okay, so I could, of course, flip this thing around, and now from left to right, it is increasing, and then it reaches the turning point, the vertex in this case, and then starts decreasing again. So this vertex for a parabola always marks the minimum or the absolute minimum or absolute maximum for the for the graph. Here we have an absolute maximum because there are no points on the graph that are higher than that. And remember it's specifically the y coordinate that is the absolute maximum or minimum point. Okay. Now it gets a little bit more complicated when it's a polynomial graph. Remember basically what we did. We had a couple of formulas. One of them was uh, if it's in standard form, we could use the negative b over 2a, find the x value, plug it into the equation, find the um, y value. If you need the two x-intercepts here, you could average those out and you could find the axis of symmetry right there. So it was symmetric. That is not necessarily going to be true for other polynomial graphs. Okay. So other polynomial functions also have minimums and maximum points but they may not be absolute ones. So think of your end behavior. So sometimes you have like a disco dancer and it may keep on going in one direction uh, or the other one. So extrema, these minimum or maximum points, extreme is the fancy word for that, come in two kinds. The first kind is an absolute. So if we look back at the previous graph, an absolute is like the vertex on a parabola. There's no points either above or below it. Okay. The other kind is a relative or local minimum or maximum. Those two words are usually used interchangeably. You either say a relative minimum or a local minimum. So take a look at the picture right here. So I've got uh, what looks like a cubic polynomial function, and there are two humps. And the one on the left-hand side, the one that's marked out in red there, is a local maximum or a relative maximum. What that means is, call it the pin here, in this general area, it's the highest point on the graph. It is not the highest point overall because it goes all the way to positive infinity over here, so positive infinity. So it's not the highest point overall, but just in the surrounding area of that point, of that point it's the highest one. And again, we're looking at the y-coordinate. Okay, over on the right-hand side of the graph, we have ourselves a local minimum. It is the lowest point on the graph in that general area, just in this small little area. It's not the lowest point overall because that 
um, is over here, uh, the in behavior is indicating negative infinity. So let me ask you a question here. Do you think this graph has an absolute maximum? The answer is it does not. It doesn't have an absolute maximum because we're going up to positive infinity. It never stops. So there is no absolute maximum value. Same thing with an absolute minimum. It doesn't have one because it keeps going down forever. Okay, so the locations of these points, we're going to use our graph and calculate it to approximate where they are. Where they are. So, um, that's what this is all about. We're going to approximate them with our, our graphing calculator. So here's some detailed notes, instructions on how to call this up on your calculator. So it's pretty easy. So the first thing is you're going to type in your function under y equals. And then choose your favorite zoom setting. Usually it's zoom standard. That's, that's usually enough to see the whole picture. If it's not, you might have to zoom out, fiddle with your window settings. Then you're going to go back to the calculate menu, second trace. And this time you're going to choose minimum or maximum. Okay, and then you'll have to set the left and the right bound just like we did for zeros. Okay, and then the last step, of course, is a little bit of magic. Okay, so here's our example, the one we'll work on in this, in this video. Uh, let's call up the calculator here. All right, turn it on, of course. There, oh, it's already in y equals. Let's type in our equation. 0.5 x to the third. All right, uh, uh, scroll out, come on, plus x squared, uh, x to the 22 power, awesome, okay, yeah, scroll out, and then minus x, and plus 2. Okay, so there we go, we have our equation in there, just checking for typos, okay, so it's in there, let's go to zoom, let's choose number 6, zoom standard, let's see if that's enough information, and it is, okay, so I'm going to, uh, go to the calculate menu in order to find out where these humps are. What kind is this first one? Well, this one is a, the, all the points are down below it, so this must be a, a local or a relative maximum. And then I'm looking for another one, a relative or local minimum. So let's find the one on the left hand side first. I go to second, calculate, second trace, the calculate menu. And this time we're going to look at the maximum number four. Just as we did before, you have to set a left bound and a right bound because your calculator is not doing calculus or algebra or whatever in order to find these points. It's examining every single point within an interval that you say and then finds the highest one. That's what it's doing. So let's uh, use our arrow keys, scroll over here. I could just type something in, whatever. And then uh, maybe I type in zero for the right bound. Okay, so I have a left bound, I have a right bound. And now for a guess, mm, no, I'm just going to hit enter, whatever. And then it'll tell me. And here is a local maximum point. It's at negative 1.72. Uh, call up the pen. Call up the pen. Oh, okay. Call up the pen. Negative 1.72. This is a max a relative one, or local, comma, and I didn't catch the y value, what was it? No! No. Never. And the y value is 4.13. Here we go, 4.13. Now the actual maximum value is 4.13, right? It's the y value on that. Now we had one more and it was a local minimum. And uh, let's get the coordinates for that one the same kind of way. So uh, go back to the calculate menu, second, trace. This time I'm gonna choose number three for minimum. And how about we go from zero to, I don't know, maybe three. That should cover it. Guess, no, don't want to. Don't want to. We got 0 0.387. 0 0.387. And the y value 1.79. 1.79. And the local minimum value is actually 1.79, the y value. Okay, and how about absolute mins or maxes? Do we have any absolute ones? 
Well, no, since this has odd disco dancer behavior, it goes up to positive infinity, down to negative infinity, so there are no absolute mins or maxes. All right, uh, so there's the end of this video. There's a couple of problems in the next one. Please check that out. There's one very sweet application problem in that.